One time someone asked me if I could share my testimony with them. And to be honest, at that time I was going through a big change and big process in my life where God was changing a lot of things inside of me and the way I look at life. So I thought my testimony was like incomplete and I was not ready to share it back then. But lately I've been feeling the Holy Spirit prompting me to share it. So yeah, I think it's time to share how I met Jesus. Hi, my name is Mabel and this is how I really met Jesus. So let's start from the beginning. I grew up in a Christian home. If you didn't grow up in a Christian home and you feel like you're not gonna identify with my story, I invite you to stay until the end because maybe your kids uh, will grow up in a Christian home and through my story you can maybe understand them better and guide them and lead them in their Christian walk. So like I said, I grew up in a Christian home, watching my parents being very active in church. They, they were leading ministries, they were every Sunday at church. Sometimes we were some of the first ones to get to church and some of the last ones to leave church. So uh, my sisters and I would also be very active in church. We were every Sunday at church in the Sunday school class, in BBS, we were part of the kids choir, we were participating in plays and um, well yeah very active in church. So every time they would do like a special activity for kids and they would um, share the gospel and say well who wants to invite Jesus in their hearts as their savior? I would raise my hand most of the times, but there was one time that it felt different. I was around seven or eight years old. I don't really remember exactly my age, but I do remember it was the first day of school. And this was back in Cuba. So yes, I was blessed to be born at a time where we had like a little bit more freedom, religiously speaking, but still back in Cuba, a lot of teachers or even other kids will make fun of Christians and will shame Christians because of uh, their beliefs. So it was the first day of school and we had a new teacher and it caught me by surprise because he asked who were the Christians in the room. I remember feeling very anxious, nervous, and afraid, so I didn't raise my hand. But one of my friends did. Some of the kids in the room knew that I was a Christian, that I would go to church every Sunday. And they pointed at me and they said, well, Mabel, you are a Christian, you go to church. I don't remember what I said and how I reacted to that um, scenario, but I do remember I was even more ashamed. The day went on and I remember being very anxious throughout all the day. Yes, I played with my friends at school, but inside of my head and inside of me, I knew I did something wrong. Um, and I was not at peace with myself. When I got home from school, I didn't know what to do, but I wanted to do something. I wanted to find out what were the consequences of what I did because I knew I did something bad. I denied that I was a Christian. I denied that I believed in Jesus. So I went to my mom and I told her the story. As it happened, uh, the teacher asked who were the Christians in the room, but I lied and I told her that my friend didn't raise her hand, that I did, but she didn't. So I wanted to find out what would happen to her. Um, I remember my mom telling me the Bible verse um, that says that if we deny Jesus in the world, He is going to deny us before God the Father once we get to heaven. I would have a very vivid imagination as a kid. So in that moment, I imagined myself very vividly getting into heaven and Jesus looking into my eyes and say, I don't know her. So that broke my heart. In that moment, I was not only anxious, 
because I didn't know the consequences of what I did but I was very very sad at that moment so I didn't know what to do because I lied in school I lied to my mom I didn't know if I could just retract myself and tell her well mom that's a lie I was the one who didn't raise her hand what can I what can I do now so the afternoon went on and my sister was playing with my cousin and I would play too but I remember I was again very anxious I didn't know what to do at night I don't remember if I went to my grandma or I was just sitting next to her I remember feeling like I wanted to tell her to tell her the real story what really happened so I told her what really happened and in that moment I felt so relieved with what my grandma told me don't remember exactly her words um, but I do remember her giving me the solution and offering me um, a new start she presented again the gospel that I have heard all my childhood but this time this time felt different so I remember going into her room and praying by myself and asking the Lord to forgive me and to come into my heart and to be my savior and yeah, that is the moment that I would say I did the prayer. Um, I invited Jesus as my savior because in that moment, I felt like I did something really bad, right? But after that day, nothing really changed that much in my life. I was a kid, like any other kid. Yes, I would go to church every Sunday. I would participate in special locations. Like I said, we sometimes would be the first ones to get to church and sometimes be the last ones to leave church. I was very involved in all the traditions, right? But my life didn't really change. Why? Fast forward, I'm like in my teen years, right? My 13, 14 years my parents uh, were offered to go to Peru to do missions and we went with them. In that season of my life, I remember struggling a lot with self-esteem. I remember feeling uh, not confident at all and waking up at night being very afraid of the dark. And I would ask myself, well, if I am a Christian, if I believe in Jesus, why am I so afraid and why am I struggling a lot with self-esteem? I didn't believe I was pretty. I believed that I was very skinny and I would compare myself a lot with other girls and not only physically but also my personality. I was very shy. I remember I would be afraid to speak in front of adults and that made me question a lot um, what was my purpose in the world? I remember thinking a lot, well, if I can speak, if I am very shy, what can I bring to the table? What can I do to serve in Jesus' kingdom and to feel like I am fulfilling a purpose in this world? That led me to think that I didn't have a purpose in the world. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything in church or doing anything for the Lord because I was very shy. I couldn't even speak. Now I was struggling with my identity, with uh, my purpose in life. Well, I continue struggling with these thoughts and trying to find out my purpose in the world, but at the same time thinking that, well, there's no purpose with my life because I don't see myself doing anything big for the Lord. Then we came here to United States and I struggle making new friends. I remember going to school and my parents were trying to find out a church that they could serve in and we could be active again in church but I didn't have any friends so I felt very lonely in that moment in my life and that led me to start reading the Bible for myself that led me to start praying um, in my room and spending time with God and I remember one day 
I was in my quiet time, right? And feeling tired of struggling with self-esteem and um, lack of confidence in myself and what I could do. Tired of looking at myself the way I was seeing myself. So I remember standing up, looking myself in the mirror, and I prayed. And I really, really asked God, God, help me see myself the way you see me. And I remember um, that was all I, I said in that prayer. God, help me see myself the way you see me. After that day, I continued reading the Bible for myself. I continued praying and spending time with God. And I started feeling like something was changing in my life. I believe God was preparing my heart to be tender to His voice specifically for this day. Because at the age of 17, we were presented with the opportunity to go to a Christian retreat. I was not supposed to be in that retreat. Uh, that retreat was for married couples and young adults starting at 18 years old. And even though I was just one year younger, I, I was not meant to be there, but it was like God wanted me to be there. He, he was something special. Uh, for me in that retreat. So we went and every night, every message, I would feel like God was speaking directly to me. And the last night when the pastor did the altar call, I felt like I was the only one in the room. I felt like God was speaking to me and I felt Jesus calling me. I have never felt that way before and I believe that when I was around seven and eight years old, I really prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart and to be my savior and I really believe in Jesus as my savior. But that's why I never saw a transformation or a change in my life. Something was missing. I only believe in Jesus as my savior, but that was it. But this night, when I felt Jesus calling me, it was different. It was like at a deeper level, I was comprehending that the Christian life is not only believing in Jesus as my savior, but surrendering my life completely to him. But then the pastor started mentioning different callings and he started mentioning, well, maybe you feel called to be a pastor. Maybe you feel called to be a Sunday school teacher, uh, worship leader. And in that moment, I started questioning and doubting if I really was feeling like Jesus was calling me because I didn't feel Jesus calling me to a specific position or a specific ministry. I just felt Jesus calling me to surrender completely my life to Him. So I was struggling with my thoughts onto the band started playing I Surrender by Hilson. Um, I was praying and telling the Lord, well, God, I feel like you're calling me, but I don't know what you're calling me to. I don't know what is my life gonna look like. I, I don't know what are your plans for me. So I, I don't know where you're calling me to. But when I started listening to the song, Jesus was telling me, I am not calling you to a specific position. I am calling you to me. I am calling you to surrender your life completely to me. Are you gonna let me be the Lord of your life and you're gonna start living your life for me? And now looking back, I realize that that's the first and most important calling that Jesus does throughout all his ministry in, the, in, in this world. When he came to this world, he was not calling people well, I'm calling you to be this and I'm calling you to be that. No, the first and most important calling Jesus did was to him. Come to me. Come follow me. And that is what I felt that day. Jesus calling me to him, to have a personal relationship with him, to surrender my life completely to him. So in that moment, I was relieved and I was, okay, God, I don't need to have the complete picture of what you want to do with my life. I just surrender my life to you. 
So after that day, now looking back, can really see that the Holy Spirit started the process of transformation in my life and sanctification in my life. And God took me through some processes after that that made me mature spiritually in Him. I remember going to my last year of high school and it was a new school. It was very hard to make new friends at this point because a lot of people knew each other from the ninth grade and it was a big school so every class was with different people. It was hard to make friends but I didn't feel alone in this moment. I didn't feel lonely. I remember going to school every morning in the bus and put it on my headphones and listen to worship music and get into school and going into the office because my first period was office eight and while everyone else was in the cafeteria eating breakfast i would be in the office reading a devotional and spending time with jesus and those were very beautiful moments with God, with Jesus, building a personal relationship with Him that I never had before. Even though I grew up in a Christian home, I wouldn't have these intimate moments with Jesus. I wouldn't read the Bible for myself. All I knew about Jesus was the lessons that the Sunday school teacher would tell me or my parents would tell me, but I never experienced Jesus in a personal level before. I really see that after my decision to make Jesus as my Lord, but not only my Savior, but my Lord and Savior, is when I really started seeing a change in my life, a change of the way I saw myself, the way I saw Jesus, the way I saw life. So why am I sharing my story, my testimony? It's not this uh, big change or this great testimony that sometimes we hear um, from, from people that have wonderful testimonies, but it's also a wonderful testimony because I believe that people like me that grew up in a Christian home or are growing in a Christian home, sometimes we struggle to see the difference because we are in the middle of all the traditions and going to church every Sunday and being very involved in church. And now we have Gen Z's and millennials that sometimes we believe that we are okay, that we are fine because we we are going to church because we have we have gone to church a whole life but what i can notice with the story that god was writing with my life is that when we made jesus the lord of our lives when we understand at a deeper level what really means to live a christian life what really means to follow jesus and have a personal relationship with him is what can transform our life it's not going to sundays to church it's not being in ministries, it's not serving in church and, ver and being very active in church, but living a personal relationship with God. And it's going to cost us, yes, because we're going to have to sacrifice our human desires sometimes because like the Bible says, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So we're not supposed to be going to church on Sunday and living a life that is very comfortable in this world. We are very comfortable with what the world can offer us if we are not living a life that really is surrender completely to Jesus. So my intention is not to make you doubt about your salvation, not at all, but to really examine ourselves. Am I only believing in Jesus as my savior or am I making him the Lord of my life? Am I really taking my cross and follow him? It's gonna cost us, yes. We're gonna have to walk the narrow way and say no to a lot of things. 
when we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, it's like we stop living for ourselves and we start living for Him. And that's how I really met Jesus. Even though I grew up in a Christian home, I started a personal relationship with Him when I was 17 years old. So that was it. That was my testimony.